Hey students, I'm your Nandini ma'am. Today, I'm going to read chapter 12, Electricity of class 10 from the book NCRT. So let's get started. Electricity has an important place in modern society. It is controllable and convenient form of energy, which is used for a variety of uses in homes, schools, hospitals, industries, and so on. What constitutes electricity? How does it flow in an electric circuit? What are the factors that control or regulate the current through an electric circuit? In this chapter, we shall attempt to answer such questions. We shall also discuss the heating effect of electric current and its applications. Electric current and circuit. We are familiar with air current and water current. We know that flowing water constitute water current in rivers. Similarly, if the electric charge flows through a conductor, for example, through a metallic wire, we say that there is an electric current in the conductor. In a torch, we know that the cells or a battery, when placed in proper order, provide flow of charges or an electric current through the torch bulb to glow. We have also seen that the torch gives light only when its switch is on. What does a switch do? A switch makes a conducting link between the cell and the bulb. A continuous and closed path of an electric current is called an electric circuit. Now, if the circuit is broken anywhere or the switch of the torch is turned off, the current stops flowing and the bulb does not glow. How do we express electric current? Electric current is expressed by the amount of charge flowing through a particular area in unit time. In other words, it is the rate of flow of electric charges. In circuits using metallic wires, electrons constitute the flow of charges. However, electrons were not known at the time when the phenomenon of electricity was first observed. So, electric current was considered to be the flow of positive charges and the direction of flow of positive charges was taken to be the direction of electric current. Conventionally, in an electric circuit, the direction of electric current is taken as opposite to the direction of the flow of electrons, which are negative charges. If a net charge Q flows across any cross-section of a conductor in time T, then the current I through the cross-section is I is equal to Q over T. The SI unit of electric charge is Coulomb, which is equivalent to the charge contained in nearly 6 into 10 to the power 18 electrons. We know that an electron possesses a negative charge of 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs. The electric current is expressed by a unit called Ampere, named after the French scientist Andre Marie Ampere. One Ampere is constituted by the flow of one coulomb of charge per second, that is, one A is equal to one C over one S. Small quantities of current are expressed in milliampere or in microampere. An instrument called ammeter measures electric current in a circuit. It is always connected in series in a circuit through which the current is to be measured. Figure 12.1 shows the schematic diagram of a typical electric circuit comprising a cell, an electric bulb, an ammeter, and a plug key. Note that the electric current flows in the circuit from the positive terminal of the cell to the negative terminal of the cell through the bulb and ammeter. More to know. Flow of charges inside a wire. How does a metal conduct electricity? You would think that a low energy electron would have great difficulty passing through a solid conductor. Inside the solid, the atoms are packed together with very little spacing between them. But it turns out that the electrons are able to travel through a perfect solid crystal smoothly and easily, almost as if they were in a vacuum. The motion of electrons in a conductor, however, is very different from that of charges in empty space. When a steady current flows through a conductor, the electrons in it move with a certain average drift speed. One can calculate this drift speed of electrons for a typical copper wire carrying a small current. And it is found to be actually very small of the order of 1 mm per second. How is it then that an electric bulb lights up as soon as we turn the switch on? 
it cannot be that a current starts only when an electron from one terminal of the electric supply physically reaches the other terminal through the bulb because the physical drift of electrons in the conducting wires is a very slow process the exact mechanism of the electric electric current flow which takes place with the speed close to the speed of light is fascinating but it is beyond the scope of this book so do you feel like probing this question at an advanced level electric potential and potential difference what makes the electric charge to flow let us consider the analogy of flow of water charges do not flow in a copper wire by themselves just as water in a perfectly horizontal tube does not flow if one end of the tube is connected to a tank of water kept at a higher level such that there is a pressure difference between the two ends of the tube water flows out of the other end of the tube for flow of charges in a conducting metallic wire the gravity of course has no role to play the electrons move only if there is a difference of electric pressure called the potential difference along the conductor this difference of potential may be produced by a battery consisting of one or more electric cells the chemical action within a cell generates the potential difference across the terminals of the cell even when no current is drawn from it when the cell is connected to a conducting circuit element the potential difference sets the charges in motion in the conductor and produces an electric current in order to maintain the current in a given circuit the cell has to expend its chemical energy stored in it we define the electric potential difference between two points in an electric circuit carrying some current as the work done to move a unit charge from one point to the other potential difference between two points is equal to work done over charge the si unit of electric potential difference is volt named after alessandro volta an italian physicist one volt is the potential difference between two points in a current carrying conductor when one joule of work is done to move a charge of one coulomb from one point to the other the potential difference is measured by means of an instrument called the voltmeter the voltmeter is always connected in parallel across the points between which the potential difference is to be measured circuit diagram we know that an electric circuit as shown in figure 12.1 comprises a cell a plug key electrical components and connecting wires it is often convenient to draw a schematic diagram in which different components of the circuit are represented by the symbols conveniently used conventional symbols used to represent some of the most commonly used electrical components are given in table 12.1 ohm's law Is there a relationship between the potential difference across a conductor and the current through it? Let us explore with an activity. Activity twelve point one. Set up a circuit as shown in Figure twelve point two, consisting of a nichrome wire X Y of length say zero point five m, an ammeter, a voltmeter, and four cells of one point five volt each. Nichrome is an alloy of nickel, chromium, manganese, and iron metals. first use only one cell as the source in the circuit note the reading in the ammeter i for the current and reading of the voltmeter v for the potential difference across the nichrome wire xy in the circuit tabulate them in the table given next connect two cells in the circuit and note the respective readings of the ammeter and voltmeter for the values of current through the nichrome wire and potential difference across the nichrome wire repeat the above steps using three cells and then four cells in the circuit separately calculate the ratio of v to i for each pair of potential difference v and current i plot a graph between v and i and observe the nature of the graph in this activity you will find that approximately the same value for v over i is obtained in each case thus The VI graph is a straight line that passes through the origin of the graph as shown in figure 12.3. Thus, V over I is a constant ratio. In 1827, a German physicist, Georg Simon Ohm, found out the relationship between the current I flowing in a metallic wire and potential difference across its terminals. He stated that the electric current flowing through a metallic wire is directly proportional to the potential difference v across its ends provided its temperature remains the same this is called ohm's law 
In other words, V is directly proportional to I. V over I is equal to constant, which is equal to R. So V is equal to I R. In equation 12.4, R is a constant for the given metallic wire at a given temperature and is called its resistance. It is the property of a conductor to resist the flow of charges through it. Its SI unit is ohm, represented by the Greek letter. According to Ohm's law, R is equal to V over I. If the potential difference across the two ends of a conductor is one volt and the current through it is one ampere, then the resistance R of the conductor is one ohm. Also, from equation 12.5, we get I is equal to V over R. It is obvious from equation 12.7 that the current through a resistor is inversely proportional to its resistance. If the resistance is double, the current gets halved. In many practical cases, it is necessary to increase or decrease the current in an electric circuit. A component used to regulate current without changing the voltage source is called the variable's resistance. In an electric circuit, a device called rheostat is often used to change the resistance in the circuit. We will now study about electrical resistance of a conductor with the help of following activity. Activity 12.2. Take a nichrome wire, a torch bulb, a 10 watt bulb, and an ammeter 0 to 5 ampere range, a plug, key, and some connecting wires. Set up the circuit by connecting four dry cells of 1.5 volt, each in series with the ammeter, leaving a gap xy in the circuit as shown in figure 12.4. Complete the circuit by connecting the nichrome wire in the gap XY. Plug the key. Note down the ammeter reading. Take out the key from the plug. Note. Always take out the key from the plug after measuring the current through the circuit. Replace the nichrome wire with the torch bulb in the circuit and find the current through it by measuring the reading of the ammeter. Now repeat the above step with the 10 watt bulb in the gap XY. Are the ammeter readings differ for different components connected in the gap XY? What do the above observations indicate? You may repeat this activity by keeping any material component in the gap. Observe the ammeter readings in each case. Analyze the observations. In this activity, we observe that the current is different for different components. Why do they differ? Certain components offer an easy path for the flow of electric current, while the others resist the flow. We know that motion of electrons in an electric circuit constitutes an electric current. The electrons, however, are not completely free to move within a conductor. They are restrained by the attraction of the atoms among which they move. Thus, motion of electrons through a conductor is retarded by its resistance. A component of a given size that offers a low resistance is a good conductor. A conductor having some appreciable resistance is called a resistor. A component of identical size that offers a higher resistance is a poor conductor. An insulator of the same size offers even higher resistance. Factors on which the resistance of a conductor depends. Activity 12.3. Complete an electric circuit consisting of a cell, an ammeter, a nichrome wire of length L, and a plug key as shown in figure 12.5. Now plug the key, note the current in the ammeter, replace the nichrome wire by another nichrome wire of same thickness but twice the length, that is 2L. Note the ammeter reading. Now replace the wire by a thicker nichrome wire of the same length L. A thicker wire has a larger cross-sectional area. Again note down the current through the circuit. Instead of taking a nichrome wire, connect a copper wire in the circuit. Let the wire be of the same length and same area of cross-section as that of the first nichrome wire. Note the value of the current. Notice the difference in the current in all cases. Does the current depend on the length of the conductor? Does the current depend on the area of cross-section of the wire used? It is observed that the ammeter reading decreases to one half when the length of the wire is doubled. The ammeter reading is increased when a thicker wire of the same material and of the same length is used in the circuit. A change in ammeter reading is observed when a wire of different material of the same length and same area of cross-section is used. 
on applying ohm's law we observe that the resistance of the conductor depends on its length on its area of cross section and on the nature of its material precise measurements have shown that resistance of a uniform metallic conductor is directly proportional to its length and inversely proportional to the area of cross section that is r is directly proportional to l by a r is equal to rho l by a where rho is a constant of proportionality and is called the electrical resistivity of the material of the conductor the si unit of resistivity is ohm meter it is a characteristic property of the material the metals and alloys have very low resistivity in the range of 10 to the power minus 8 ohm meter to 10 to the power minus 6 ohm meter they are good conductors of electricity insulators like rubber and glass have resistivity of the order of 10 to the power 12 to 10 to the power 17 ohm meter both the resistance and resistivity of a material vary with temperature table 12.2 reveals that the resistivity of an alloy is generally higher than that of its constituent metals alloys do not oxidize readily at high temperatures for this reason they are commonly used in electrical heating devices like electric iron toasters etc tungsten is used almost exclusively for filaments of electric bulbs whereas copper and aluminium are generally used for electrical transmission lines resistance of a system of resistors in preceding sections we learned about some simple electrical circuits we have noticed how the current through a conductor depends upon its resistance and the potential difference across its ends in various electrical gadgets we often use resistors in various combinations we now therefore intend to see how ohm's law can be applied to combinations of resistors there are two methods of joining the resistors together figure 12.6 shows an electric circuit in which three resistors having resistances r1 r2 and r3 respectively are joined end to end here the resistors are said to be connected in series figure 12.7 shows a combination of resistors in which three resistors are connected together between points x and y here the resistors are said to be connected in parallel resistors in series what happens to the value of current when a number of resistors are connected in series in a circuit what would be their equivalent resistance let us try to understand these with the help of the following activities activity 12.4 join three resistors of different values in series connect them with a battery an ammeter and a plug key as shown in figure 12.6 You may use the resistors of values like 1 ohm, 2 ohm, 3 ohm, etc., and a battery of 6 volt for performing this activity. Plug the key. Note the ammeter reading. Change the position of ammeter to anywhere in between the resistors. Note the ammeter reading each time. Do you find any change in the value of current through the ammeter? You will observe that the value of the current in the ammeter is the same independent of its position in the electric circuit. It means that in a series combination of resistors, the current is the same in every part of the circuit, or the same current through each resistor. Activity 12.5. In activity 12.4, insert a voltmeter across the ends x and y of series combination of three resistors, as shown in figure 12.8. plug the key in the circuit and note the voltmeter reading it gives the potential difference across the series combination of resistors let it be v now measure the potential difference across the two terminals of the battery compare the two values take out the plug key and disconnect the voltmeter now insert the voltmeter across the ends x and p of the first resistor as shown in figure 12.8 plug the key and measure the potential difference across the first resistor let it be b1 similarly measure the potential difference across the other two resistors separately let these values be b2 and b3 respectively reduce a relationship between b b1 b2 and b3 you will observe that the potential difference v is equal to the sum of potential differences b1 b2 and b3 that is the total potential difference across a combination of resistors in series is equal to the sum of potential difference across the individual resistors that is 
V is equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3. In the electric circuit shown in figure 12.8, let I be the current through the circuit. The current through each resistor is also I. It is possible to replace the three resistors joined in series by an equivalent single resistor of resistance R such that the potential difference V across it and the current I through the current through the circuit remains the same. Applying the Ohm's law to the entire circuit, we have V is equal to IR. On applying Ohm's law to the three resistors separately, we further have V1 is equal to IR1, V2 is equal to IR2, and V3 is equal to IR3. So from equation 12.11, IR is equal to IR1 plus IR2 plus IR3. Or we can say RS is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3. So we can conclude that when several resistors are joined in series, the resistance of the combination RS equals the sum of their individual resistances, R1, R2, and R3, and is thus greater than any individual resistance. Resistors in parallel. Now let us consider the arrangement of three resistors joined in parallel with a combination of cells or a battery as shown in figure 12.7. Activity 12.6. Make a parallel combination XY of three resistors having resistances R1, R2 and R3 respectively. Connected with a battery, a plug key and an ammeter as shown in figure 12.10. Also connect a voltmeter in parallel with the combination of resistors. Plug the key and note the ammeter reading. Let the current be I. Also take the voltmeter reading. It gives the potential difference V across the combination. The potential difference across each resistor is also V. This can be checked by connecting the voltmeter across each individual resistor. Take out the plug from the key, remove the ammeter and voltmeter from the circuit. Insert the ammeter in series with the resistor R1 as shown in figure 12.11. Note the ammeter reading I1. Similarly, measure the currents through R2 and R3. Let these be I2 and I3 respectively. What is the relationship between I, I1, I2 and I3? It is observed that the total current I is equal to the sum of the separate currents through each branch of the combination. So I is equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3. Let RP be the equivalent resistance of the parallel combination of resistors. By applying Ohm's law to the parallel combination of resistors, we have I is equal to V over RP. So in applying Ohm's law to each resistor, we have I1 is equal to V by R1, I2 is equal to V by R2, and I3 is equal to V by R3. So from equations, 12.15 to 12.17, we have V over RP is equal to V over R1 plus V over R2 plus V over R3. Or we can say 1 by R1 is equal to 1 by RP is equal to 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 plus 1 by R3. Thus, we may conclude that the reciprocal of the equivalent resistance of a group of resistances joined in parallel is equal to the sum of the reciprocals of the individual resistances. We have seen that in a series circuit, the current is constant throughout the electric circuit. Thus, it is obviously impracticable to connect an electric bulb and electric heater in series because they need currents of widely different values to operate properly. Another major disadvantage of a series circuit is that when one component fails, the circuit is broken and none of the components works. If you have used fairy lights to decorate buildings on festivals, on marriage celebrations, etc., you might have seen the electrician spending a lot of time in trouble locating and replacing the dead bulb. Each has to be tested to find which has fused or gone. On the other hand, a parallel circuit divides the current through the electrical gadgets. The total resistance in a parallel circuit is decreased as per equation 12.18. This is helpful particularly when each gadget has different resistance and requires different current to operate properly. Heating effect of electric current. We know that a battery or a cell is a source of electrical energy. The chemical reaction between the cell generates the potential difference between its two terminals that sets the electrons in motion to flow the current through a resistor or a system of resistors connected to the battery. 
we have also seen in section 12.2 that to maintain the current, the source has to keep expending its energy. Where does this energy go? A part of the source energy is maintaining the current may be consumed into the useful work. The rest of the source energy may be expended in heat to raise the temperature of the gadget. We often observe this in our daily life. For example, an electric fan becomes warm if used continuously for a longer time, etc. On the other hand, if the electric circuit is purely resistive, that is a configuration of resistors only connected to a battery, the source energy continually gets dissipated entirely in the form of heat. This is known as the heating effect of electric current. This effect is utilized in devices such as electric heater, electric iron, etc. Consider a current I flowing through a resistor of resistance R. Let the potential difference across it be V. Let T be the time during which a charge Q flows across. The work done in moving the charge Q through a potential difference V is VQ. Therefore, the source must apply energy equal to VQ in time T. Hence, the power input to the circuit by the source is P is equal to V Q over T, which is equal to V into I. Or the energy supplied to the circuit by the source in time T is P into T, or we can say V I T. What happens to this energy expended by the source? This energy gets dissipated in the resistor as heat. Thus, for a steady current I, the amount of heat H produced in time T is H is equal to V I T. Applying Ohm's law, we get H is equal to I square RT. This is known as Joule's law of heating. The law implies that heat produced in a resistor is directly proportional to the square of current for a given resistance, directly proportional to resistance for a given current, and directly proportional to the time for which the current flows through the resistor. In practical situations, when an electric appliance is connected to a known voltage source, Equation 12.21 is used after calculating the current through it using the relation I is equal to V over R. Practical applications of heating effect of electric current. The generation of heat in a conductor is an inevitable consequence of electric current. In many cases, it is undesirable as it converts useful electrical energy into heat. In electric circuits, the unavoidable heating can increase the temperature of the components and alter their properties. However, heating effect of electric current has many useful properties, or we can say applications. The electric laundry iron, electric toaster, electric oven, electric kettle, and electric heater are some of the familiar devices based on Joule's heating. The electric heating is also used to produce light as in an electric bulb. Here, the filament must retain as much of the heat generated as it possible so that it gets very hot and emits light. It must not melt at such high temperature. A strong metal with high melting point such as tungsten is used for making bulk filaments. The filament should be thermally isolated as much as possible using insulating support etc. The bulbs are usually filled with chemically inactive nitrogen or argon gases to prolong the life of filament. Most of the power consumed by the filament appears as heat, but a small part of it is in the form of light radiated. Another common application of Joule's heating is the fuse used in electric circuits. It protects circuits and appliances by stopping the flow of any unduly high electric current. The fuse is placed in series with the device. It consists of a piece of wire made of a metal or an alloy of appropriate melting point, for example, aluminium, copper, iron, lead, etc. If the current larger than the specified value flows through the circuit, the temperature of the fuse wire increases. This melts the fuse wire and breaks the circuit. The fuse wire is usually encased in a cartridge of proclaim or similar material with metal ends. The fuses used for domestic purposes are rated as 1 ampere, 2 ampere, 3 ampere, 5 ampere, 10 ampere, etc. For an electric iron which consumes 1 kilowatt electric power when operated at 220 volt, a current of 1000 over 220 ampere, that is 4.54 ampere, will flow in the circuit. In this case, a 5 ampere fuse must be used. Electric power. You have studied in your earlier class that the rate of doing work is power. This is also the rate of consumption of energy. 
Equation 12.21 gives the rate at which electrical energy is dissipated or consumed in an electric circuit. This is also termed as electric power. The power P is given by P is equal to Vi or P is equal to I square R or it is equal to V square by R. The SI unit of electric power is what? It is the power consumed by a device that carries one ampere of current that operated at a potential difference of one volt. The unit watt is very small. Therefore, in actual practice, we use a much larger unit called kilowatt. It is equal to 1000 watts. Since electrical energy is the product of power and time, the unit of electrical energy is therefore watt hour. One watt hour is the energy consumed when one watt of power is used for one hour. The commercial unit of electrical energy is kilowatt hour, commonly known as unit. One kilowatt hour is equal to 3.6 into 10 to the power 6 joules. More to know, many people think that electrons are consumed in an electric circuit. This is wrong. We pay the electricity board or electric company to provide energy to move electrons through the electric gadgets like electric bulb, fan and engines. We pay for the energy that we use. What you have learned. A stream of electrons moving through a conductor constitutes an electric current. Conventionally, the direction of current is taken opposite to the direction of flow of electrons. The SI unit of electric current is ampere. To set the electrons in motion in an electric circuit, we use a cell or a battery. A cell generates a potential difference across its terminals. It is measured in volts. Resistance is a property that resists the flow of electrons in a conductor. It controls the magnitude of the current. The SI unit of resistance is ohm. Ohm's law. The potential difference across the ends of a resistor is directly proportional to the current through it. Provided its temperature remains the same. The resistance of a conductor depends directly on its length and inversely on its area of cross-section and also on the material of the conductor. The equivalent resistance of several resistors in series is equal to the sum of their individual resistances. A set of resistors connected in parallel has an equivalent resistance Rp given by 1 by Rp is equal to 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 plus 1 by R3. The electrical energy dissipated in a resistor is given by W is equal to V into I into T. The unit of power is watt. One watt of power is consumed when one ampere of current flows at a potential difference of one volt. The commercial unit of electrical energy is kilowatt hour. One kilowatt hour is equal to 3.6 into 10 to the power 6 joules. Thank you all.